has, how it is fed using colostrum, and all things that, are, I mean, basically the things that we deal with when we are handling young livestock animals, that is the cattle, particularly the calves. Now, in today's lesson, we are going to be dealing with uh, replacing or rather rearing the replacement stock. Rearing of replacement stock. That is the young bulls and the heifers. Now, this topic generally will be tackling uh, the replacement of the, I mean, rearing of the replacement stock. We'll also be tackling the types of calf pens that we have. We'll also be looking at the structural requirements of an ideal calf pen. And we'll also be looking at the management practices that we carry out on a calf. Now, the topic is livestock production six. Uh, that is the cutter. This particular topic, I would like to give you a background on what exactly happens uh, when you're dealing with this topic in, in terms of the KCSE, because these are, the, these are candidates topic that is in Form 4. And uh, this is a topic that you find in Paper 2 when we are being tested in the KCSE. In the KCSE, this one is found in, to in Paper 2. And uh, paper two basically deals with livestock production. So this is where you are likely to find questions on this particular topic. So welcome, Lana, to this particular topic. And I hope you're going to be together uh, towards, all, I mean, throughout the lesson. So the lesson objectives, what you're going to learn today, owing to the fact that you're already introduced to the topic, we are going to continue and we're going to look at the lesson objectives whereby we look at what is a replacement stock. What do we mean when we talk of replacement stock? Replacement stock, these are animals that have been selected according to the Form 3 book, whatever we learned in Form 3. The animals that have been selected to replace the old stock. These animals, in this case, because we are dealing with cattle, we are referring to the heifers and the bulls. That is the young bulls. Of course, if I refer you back again to Form 3, we looked at the characteristics of uh, the good replacement stock. And they, of course, they should be young. That is why we are talking of the heifers, which are the young female cattle. We're also looking at the young bulls, which are the males, that are meant to replace the old ones that are wearing out. You know, when animals become old, they become less productive. And therefore, we need to replace them with younger animals, which we select with a lot of uh, carefully, we select them carefully in order to enhance production in your farm. Now, another of our objectives that you're going to look at today are the types of calf pens. Now, why are we looking at the calf pens? Why are we so much focusing on the calf pens, uh, dear Lana? This is because when you're talking of rearing, rearing is a very broad aspect of bringing up animals. When we rear animals, we are talking of a broad, it is like bringing up a young child. And therefore, rearing, one of the aspects of rearing cattle, you realize that it is good housing. A calf pen, is where the calf is housed, where these heifers are housed. And therefore, 
we require these calf pens to be structured in such a way that they are going to promote productivity in your farm. So we need to look at the types of calf pens that we can use in our farms. And uh, we, will, we, we have several of them as we're going to proceed, we'll see them. And then our next objective, Lana, dear Lana, our next objective is or are the structural requirements structural requirements of an ideal calf pen and I want to say particularly in this case this is an S equation at form 4 level by now you are familiar we have already said that this is a topic in paper 2 and you know in paper 2 or in any paper in agriculture we have sections a, B, and C. This bit of the structural requirements of an ideal calf pen is commonly tested in section C, which comprises of the S's. The S's, which can carry even up to 20 marks. So you can be sure that in this particular section, you are required to capture uh, as many points as you can so that you are able to uh, scoop the highest score in your exam. Lastly, if time allows, we're also going to look at another rearing aspect of these young uh, bulls and heifers, which you call the routine management practices. Routine management practices. That is if time allows. Now, welcome to the lesson. And this is generally what we're going to tackle today. I am looking forward to a very interesting lesson because we cannot sh shy away from agriculture. Remember, it is the backbone of our economy in Kenya. And it is a very interesting subject because it is very practical. We are looking forward to raising young citizens who are conversant with the skills that are necessary in this particular backbone in agriculture, I mean, in the economy of our country. So as I begin, I am expecting also your feedback from the KU TV, uh, from various platforms, that is the social media platforms. K at KUTV Kenya, you can tweet, you can Facebook, send your SMSs on the, uh, on the numbers that is on, on your screen. Kindly participate so that you're going to scoop the maximum uh, content that you need in this particular bit. So welcome, dear Lana, as you go through this bit that is very interesting. Now, I think already we have talked about uh, the first bit, which is replacement. Replacement of uh, the old stock. Old stock, uh, which is called, of the old stock, which is the replacement stock. I want to believe that that is very clear because replacement stock, we have said it is where you replace old animals that are wearing out. They have started becoming a bother in your farm. They have started producing little amount of milk. They are not economical to keep in your farm, dear Lana. You need to replace those sto that stock with a new version or a new or new animals, young animals. That is the heifers and the bulls, and young bulls. So when you replace those, when you're replacing those young bulls and heifers, you need to rear them in such a way that uh, these bulls, you're going to rear them economically with minimal uh, costs, but at, uh, but at the end of the day, you're going to achieve the highest amount of 
uh, profit when you are rearing them. Now, because of that, you need to look, we need to look at the types of calf pens that you can use in your farm, types of calf pens. And the types of calf pens we have vary depending on, of course, the amount of money that you have uh, in your pocket. It depends on the kind of area that you are living. It is, if it is a, in a flooded area, you need to look for a particular type of calf pen that will suit that particular region. So generally, we have two main types of calf pens. And the first type of calf pen is called the permanent. Permanent calf pens. Permanent calf pens come with, they are capital intensive, and therefore, you require some heavy investment in terms of finances to finance the permanent, because it means they are going to last in your farm for a long time. So we have permanent calf pens. They require a, a, a huge amount of money. Compared to the second category of calf pens, that we can uh, use in our farms to rear our calves. I want to remind you, dear Lana, that a calf pen is a house, or is it, a, it is a farm structure that is used, uh, that, or, or that is constructed in a farm to house, or rather to accommodate the calf, to protect it from bad weather, from excessive sunlight to make sure that it is in a safe place where it cannot be stolen, to ensure that it is, does not, uh, it is not affected by weather elements like the rain. So that is what a calf pen is. So we are saying we have two types of calf pens, the permanent one, and we have uh, the mobile one. So you can construct a mobile calf pen or a permanent calf pen. Now, under the permanent calf pens, under the permanent calf pens, permanent, sorry, under the permanent calf pens, again, we have two categories. And the first category is the one that involves concrete, or rather, it has concrete flaws. A permanent calf pen that has concrete floors, meaning that the floor has concrete. And this floor means that it is easy to clean, and you can clean it easily and drain the, the dung and the urine to, to ensure that the place is always clean. So we have the concrete floors. We also have another permanent calf pen, which is has slated floors. Both of these calf pens, the one with the concrete and the one with slated floor, this one means that it is generally to ensure that there is proper drainage. The drainage is good because the slated floors uh, have timber. On the, on the bottom, there is timber. And the timber on the floor, that is on the floor of the calf pen, is not in contact with, the, with each other. So they are divided by a gap. There's a gap between two timber pieces. So meaning that there's a gap. And of course, the gap should not be very large to ensure that the leg, I mean, to, to prevent the legs of the calves and the, what, I mean, the calves from getting in there and injuring the animal. So there should be a slight gap between the two timber pieces to facilitate drainage. When there's urination, I mean, and the defecation, there is easy drainage through the, the spaces that have been left. So the slates, the slated floors means that there's a gap between the timbers. The timbers are not close together. So there is a gap between the two. The concrete one, of course, is where you mix uh, the sand, the ballast to come up with the final uh, concrete. And then, of course, you, you put it on the floor as you construct the, the calf pen. So those are the permanent calf pens. They are two. We have said the concrete and the slated. Now, the mobile calf pen, 
mobile coming from the word mobility or rather bringing the aspect of mobility what is mobility mobility is that idea of movement it means that you can move you can move the calf pen from one place to the other you can move it from one area to the next uh, maybe you can move it today from a certain region you move it to another area so as the calf can be able to feed uh, on fresh pastures so the mobile calf pens the mobile calf pens dear lana these ones can easily be moved even after two days where you had placed it you move it and then of course you move together with the calf so that you get fresh pastures now these mobile calf pens mean that because the calf is feeding on the pastures that are growing on the floor i mean on the ground sorry you realize that the 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 floor of that calf pen is not covered it is empty or rather it is it is open the floor is open but the rest of the area is uh, is constructed so that when you move you move with the calf and then it, you look for fresh pastures and you realize that the calf will be able to feed on fresh pastures so these calf pens have a uh, have an advantage they have an advantage of there is no build up of parasites and diseases and there, because of that movement because you move them almost every other day so you move them and there is no build up of uh, parasites and diseases parasites like the ticks you move them you leave the pests uh, where it where they had been left i mean where they had spent the previous day maybe a disadvantage we can point out on this particular area of the mobile calf pens uh, you can talk of the idea of the fa being a bit laborious and tedious because every other day the farmer must move or, ra or rather the farmer must look for someone to move uh, these calf pens which is a bit laborious and tedious and it consumes a lot of time compared to the mobile I mean to the permanent calf pens so the permanent calf pens we said maybe a disadvantage you can talk about is the fact that you require materials that are a bit expensive to construct like the sand and the ballast uh, and the cement to, to make the concrete ones that one makes it a bit expensive but on the other side the permanent ones are a bit durable because they last in the farm for a very long time so up to that point uh, Lana I want to imagine that you now can be able to differentiate between a mobile calf pen and a permanent calf pen. So keep streaming and keep it sending your SMSs on the number that is on your screen. Ask questions. Uh, we, are, we are going to look at those questions at the end of the, at the, end of the lesson also visit your facebook i mean visit the facebook pages it's kutv twitter handles uh, move there and send your feedback about the lesson and also you can send your questions as well so i hope you are enjoying the lesson and i hope you're learning because you need to keep the uh, learning even during this period remember learning is a very continuous process and that is why we are here to ensure that every other time you are activating your mind with learning because it is very important. Yeah, so dear Lana, after looking at the types of calf pens, the next objective of this lesson, and I think it is the one that is carrying the, the weight of the day because I believe you have interacted with questions in your different schools and you have realized that these are very common question in the exams. It's a very common question in the exam, especially in that section C that you have said. Carrying ar be around almost 16 marks, that is a, a, a very uh, high mark. And the challenge that we go through when we are marking some of the questions, I mean, this question in most cases 
it is the approach. The learners have the content, you have all the content, but presenting the answer is the challenge. And that is what I want us to tackle today, how to answer this question on the ideal, I mean requirements of an ideal calf pen. Structural requirements. Structural requirements. of an ideal calf pen. Now, structural, structural requirements. What do we require? What do we look for when we are trying to construct a calf pen? A calf pen that is going to serve our animals uh, effectively and efficiently. A calf pen that is going to boost growth a calf pen that is going to boost maturity of these animals because we want, the, we want these animals to reach service age very fast. That is the ultimate goal of a farmer, to reach service age so that they can be served and they keep uh, and they start reproducing early enough or uh, th at the right time. So structural requirements of an ideal calf pen that will boost production in the farm the first thing that we look at is that when you're constructing your calf pen, when you're constructing your calf pen, ensure that this calf pen has concrete walls. Concrete walls and floors. That is number one. An ideal, the best, the best calf pen that is going to produce uh, or rather that is going to be of importance to your farm in terms of profit maximization, ensure that, this, that the, con the, the walls and the floors are concrete. If you can afford, ensure that you can make concrete walls and floors. And this is because these concrete walls and floors are easy to clean. This is to enhance cleaning or to make the calf pen easy to clean. We need to clean these calf pens more often. And I believe that uh, you, you, could, you have a reason why even we clean our houses. I expect uh, we, we have a reason as to why we clean our houses. Of course, it's because we don't want accumulation of parasites and diseases. When we do cleaning of these uh, calf pens more often, we enhance uh, the health of these animals because they do not suffer from diseases such as foot rot. Foot rot can be brought about by areas that are not clean. When there's accumulated dung and urine in the calf pen, that, that can lead to foot rot, according to the Form 3 syllabus that we did. Now, that is the first thing. Concrete walls. Ensure if you can the, con the walls are concrete and the floors are concrete. So, that is the first idea requirement. Number two requirement of an ideal calf pen is that you should ensure that this calf pen is dry. And how do we ensure that it is dry all the time? Put or place dry litter. Dry litter. You place dry litter on the floors. Why do we place dry litter on the floors of our calf pens? This ensures that the calf pen is dry and warm. Ultimately, you know you should be asking yourself, why do we need a dry and a warm calf pen? The reason why we need a dry and a warm calf pen is simply because uh, warmth ensures that the animal is uh, healthy. It does not suffer from cold conditions that can cause pneumonia. Damp conditions in the calf pen can cause pneumonia. So you are trying to get rid of the incidences of pneumonia in the calf pen, and that is where we put dry litter. So that is another requirement of a calf pen. So the third or number three requirement of a calf pen is that the calf pen should be large enough. 
large or you can talk of spacious and how do we do this of course we ensure that we construct a large calf pen for for each calf why should it be spacious why do we need spacious houses you know at the end of the day i really like relating uh, animals to human beings why do you think we require a spacious house why do we require a spacious house? Now, in the case of animals, or in the case of these skulls, they require a sp a space and a lot of space for exercise. Exercise is very crucial. Exercise and feeding. Exercise is very crucial for each and every uh, living organism. And in the same case, uh, I mean, just as human beings, we require a lot of space. Animals also require enough space for them to be able to exercise. And of course, an, a, an animal that is getting enough exercise means that it will grow healthier and faster. And it will reach service time uh, early, and I mean, in the, in the right, at the right time. And also, we require that enough space so that we can be able to accommodate the feeding and the watering equipment. That is the feed trust and the water trust. So, dear Lana, I hope you are following. We need a co uh, concrete walls. We need dry litter. We need large and spacious, uh, a large and spacious calf pen for the uh, for, for the calf pen. Number four point. We are now halfway in terms of those points. There are eight reasons why we need. Uh, I mean, the requirements of a of a good calf pen. We require an area that is well drained the calf pen should be sited in an area that is well drained again we don't want to allow damp conditions in the area you are placing this calf pen on an area that is uh, that should that is dry it should be dry that is well drained. There is no, there, there is, the, the environment is not mushy, and therefore, we need an area that is dry, and of course, a dry area. We are looking for a dry area or a drained area to control again food rot, to control food rot. Food rot is a disease that is caused by bacterial infection. So that bacterial infection can be brought about by wet and damp conditions that you don't want to have in our calf pen. So, so that is the fourth point. A well-drained area. You should site your calf pen on a well-drained area. Not when it rains, just a slight rain, you realize that the place is getting so mushy. So we need a place that is well-drained in order to facilitate an environment that cannot harbor diseases like food rot. Uh, number fifth point is the idea of ventilation. Ventilation. Again, I want to pose a challenge to you. Have you ever sat in your house and thought why we need to open our windows more often or every other day? Why do we need fresh air into our rooms? So that is the same, same reason for the animals. Why do we need the animals' calf pens to be, or rather the calf pens to be uh, well ventilated? So the idea of ventilation should come up well ventilated. And uh, well ventilated uh, rooms, of course, are brought about by making sure that making sure that the, you put wire mesh. You make sure that there's a portion of the calf pen that has wire mesh. Wire mesh. And of course, this one boosts the immunity. The ventilation boosts the immunity of the animals because there's free circulation of oxygen into the, into the body of the calves. So a well-ventilated calf pen is an ideal one for the growth and for the rearing of these animals. So we are at point number five. And so far, 
uh, we say that this is an S equation that can earn you up to 16 marks. And for you to scoop those two marks, you need to give us the structural requirement, which in this case is the concrete walls. And you need to give us a reason why you need the concrete walls. I said the mistake, we are going to highlight the mistakes that most of the students make when answering this question. Majority uh, maybe just state, they just state concrete walls and floors and they proceed. You need to, this particular question requires two parts. There's the part on the concrete walls and then you proceed and tell us why we need the concrete walls and floors. So you can see in each and every bit that I have highlighted, there is a reason. There is a reason behind dry litter. Why do we need dry litter? You can even go ahead as a good student and tell us the examples of dry litter that you can place on that particular calf pen. Why do we need a spacious uh, room for exercise and feeding and of course uh, putting the feeding and watering equipment? Why do we need a drained area? Of course, to control diseases such as foot rot. Why do we require ventilation? And how do we ensure that our calf pens are ventilated? Of course, for the purposes of uh, good health and proper ventilation even in the, in the lungs of the calves. Uh, we also have another point. That is point number six. We say that the points are eight of them. Well explained, you get 16 marks. Point number six, if by any chance you happen to have a cow that has given birth to two, or rather to twins, those calf pens should not be placed in the same calf pen. Those calves should be housed singly. We call it single housing. This is the aspect of single housing, where you place the calves singly. You handle the calf individually. So that means as a farmer, you will have to go an extra mile in terms of investment and in terms of uh, you have to dig deep into your pocket and you construct two separate calf pens because we want every calf to be in its own calf pen. So that brings the aspect of single housing. And this single housing uh, ensures that the calves do not lick each other. Calves do not lick. We are, I'm talking of this lick, licking with the L-I. You know licks are many. There's the licking of the water. So the licking, licking. I, I, I hope you understand what you mean by licking. So the calves do not lick each other. And why don't we want calves to lick each other, dear Lana? Why don't we want calves to lick each other? Licking each other can lead to formation, formation of hair balls, hair balls in the rumen. And these hair balls are indigestible. They cannot be digested. And of course, a material that is cannot be digested, of course, is harmful uh, to anyone's uh, life. So we need these cars to be housed singly because they can lick each other since they are very young and tender. They can lick each other and it might cause that uh, leaking and hairballs, uh, which are indigestible in the, in the, I mean, in the rumen. Now, up to that point, we are at point number six, and I am encouraging you to keep uh, forwarding your questions and your feedback on, on the social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, at KUTV, and I'm also encouraging you to send also your SMSs and any sort of feedback to the to the numbers on your screen, that is at KUTV, you can send your feedback there, and you're going to uh, and you're going to respond to them at the end of the uh, at the end of the lesson. 
Yeah, so question number seven, I mean point number seven involves the idea of solid walls. When you're constructing a calf pen, ensure that the walls are solid. The walls are solid. And especially at the point where there are a lot of there's a lot of strong wind coming from. So we need solid walls especially at the sides of the very strong walls where the strong walls are coming from. And these solid walls prevent strong winds, strong winds from entering the pens, from entering the pens. This is because these strong winds can lead to a condition or a disease called pneumonia. Yeah, learners, even animals get pneumonia. So we need to prevent these animals from getting pneumonia by constructing solid walls. But I'm not saying that our calf pen should have solid walls on the four walls. You should ensure that the better part, and especially the side where the winds, the very strong winds are coming from, you put a solid wall to ensure that drought is that uh, phenomenon we call drought or that situation of drought drought with a dra another thing we are a bit keen in agriculture uh, are the spellings you need to be keen on these spellings because they, they might be a problem they can be a problem at some point so drought is brought about by strong winds coming from one direction that can cause pneumonia in these livestock animals. So dear Lana, be keen even when you go to exercise, uh, the, this skill of rearing calf pens, you can be able to follow all these uh, paths and especially the solid walls because pneumonia easily kills even children. Pneumonia easily kills even calves. So, the last point, but not the least, that we have of an ideal calf pen uh, is the lighting aspect. Light. Or rather, you should talk of well lit. The calf pen should be well lit. Well lit. And I would like to pose again another question, a question on lighting. Why do we need our houses to be well lit? Why do we need light in our houses? Light in our houses ensures or uh, makes it easy even for us to see. But in this particular case, uh, light enhances synthesis of vitamin D, synthesis of Vita D in these livestock animals. And again, I would like to pose a question that probably I'm expecting a response in our, um, uh, on the SMSs. Uh, what, what, what the deficiency, or uh, yeah, the, defici the deficiency that is brought about by lack of enough vitamin D, deficiency of vitamin D causes which disease, whether to livestock or to human, so we need to know why we need to keep the calf pens lit for that purpose of synthesizing vitamin D. They require that synthesis. So why do we require that uh, synthesis of vitamin D? So we require, uh, I mean, I, I am expecting that response and I'm looking forward to, to seeing the right one. The deficiency that is caused by I mean, the, the deficiency of vitamin D causes which particular condition in livestock animals. So learners, those are the major points. Those are the major points in this uh, bit. And I would like you to follow each one of them. And I am uh, hoping that you have followed uh, clearly. And I would like to challenge us that to take this particular question into consideration even as you do your revision. And I would also like to challenge you 
to even do the, during this period of the COVID-19, uh, you can even try to construct a simple calf pen trying to put all these factors into consideration. Even if you cannot come up with the concrete, maybe, but I would prefer you try to see what you can do to ensure that the calf pen is easy to clean, uh, ensure that the calf pen is, uh, has, is dry and warm, of course, by putting dry litter. So that is a challenge I'm trying to ask because agriculture is very skillful and it is artistic. And when you want to learn these things very fast, uh, it is good to keep practicing on these things. So try to construct. In fact, that is, uh, that is the assignment I would like to assign. If you can get a space to construct a, a calf pen, try to put all these things into consideration. And even when it comes to theory in your end of year exam, that is in the KCSC, you'll find it very easy to remember because these points, uh, you need to put them into practice well ventilated how do we ensure that the calf pen is well ventilated how do we ensure that it is well drained how do we ensure that uh, it is single housed if you have more than one calf, uh, calf how do you ensure that the walls are solid so how do you ensure that it is well lit so that is what we uh, i would like to encourage each one of the agriculture students at the form four level now that you have enough time put that time into use and it will help you somewhere even in answering the theory questions. So uh, we have several looking at your responses. Uh, we have questions that are coming up. Um, Winnie, what are the requirements of a calf pen? Uh, I think we have stated and explained them, requirements of a calf pen. That question, I know uh, this question can be approached in, I mean, it can be asked in different questions, but these are the points. Those are the points, Winnie, the concrete, the dry litter, and of course you explain. I think that is what we have been explaining, and thank you for that question. Uh, morning teacher a millennium what about uh, what height should be the calf pen raised a very good question Millie Millie a calf pen should be raised if you are uh, if you are planning to do a calf pen that is raised especially for the permanent raised ones you should raise it to a height of between that is the from the ground the first uh, I mean the posts the four posts should be measuring a height of 60, between 60 and 90 centimeters. 60 and 90 centimeters, that is the ideal height for a raised calf pen. The one that we said has slated floors. Yeah, thank you very much. That is a very good question. Uh, another question here coming from Uh, Lewis, I am Lewis from Gitonto High School. What process followed when training a calf to take milk? This one is the artificial feeding that I think uh, my colleague talked about the last time, but I, would, I wouldn't mind revisiting it. Uh, revisiting the question of artificial feeding Uh, artificial feeding the procedure okay yeah thank you yeah so uh, we are talking about the artificial artificial feeding that is feeding from a bucket training a calf to feed on a bucket artificial feeding. Maybe the cow that gave birth to that calf has died. Or maybe you have bought a calf that is very young and still needs to be given milk. How do you as a farmer feed that particular uh, calf? That is what uh, 
uh, that is what my friend here is, is asking. And I think uh, the first point on that is, of course, to ensure that your hands are clean. You clean your hands and you, you make sure that they are well sterilized before you start handling the milk. Uh, the next thing is, of course, you clean the buckets that you want to use to feed the calf with. The third uh, thing is you put clean milk. We talk of clean milk. You ensure that there is high level of cleanliness when you're dealing with these, uh, when you're dealing with these uh, calves because lack of cleanliness leads to scores. Scores. So we have said... You clean your hands, clean hands. Uh, we have said you clean buckets, clean the buckets. Put clean milk, put clean milk, of course, on the clean bucket. And then after you put clean milk, and of course the hands are clean, the next thing is you, you put the index finger, index finger on the milk. Then you entice or you, you, you put, uh, you bring the calf so that you can make it to drink. Actually, you put, you put the index finger on the mouth, not on the milk. Eh? You put the index finger on the mouth, on the mouth of the calf then when you put because young animals including children they have a tendency of they really want to suckle and they want to take to eat the fingers and the hands of of human beings so the, the you entice it with your finger that is clean and then you lower you, you lower the calf because it, the finger is already in the mouth you lower the hand into the milk lower the hand into the milk into the milk so that is the procedure basically, and this is around five marks. It's a very common question as well. Let's look to more of your feedback. Uh, here we have a state height charm somewhere from Kiamaina Secondary. Thank you, Samuel, for your feedback. Please state, please state the reason why calves should be housed in individual calf pens. I think we have mentioned that on the single housing why we house uh, calves on individual uh, calf pens, it is to prevent leaking, leaking of the calves, leaking of the calves. It, we don't want them to lick each other because it will lead to formation of hair balls, hair balls that are indigestible. And when there is indigestion, that means the animal is unhealthy. Let's... Uh, we have Naomi Motheo. Uh, thank you, teacher, for your lesson. You have understood better. Thank you very much, Naomi. Uh huh. Do cow. Uh huh. Do cows undergo menstruation? <laughs> so we have. Uh huh. I have kids. I, I have a question. Kate from Nyeri. I have a question, but it is not related to the topic. Why do farmers? Uh, prefer wearing white protective gears when harvesting honey. Of course, it is to repel to repel the bees. The bees the bees are afraid of uh, light, and of course, you know, white garments repel. I mean, reflect a lot of light, so that one can repel the bees. Let me see the questions. Thank you very much for your feedback. Uh, my name is Phyllis from Siaya. My question is, what are the management practices carried out on dairy bull calves? Dairy bull calves. That one is a... Uh, that is form four. Uh, I mean, form three work. Uh, but thank you for that. Uh, Phyllis, I would like to refer you to that form three work, but I would give you some, some points. But of course, there are more management practices on dairy... Uh, bull calves, and I think we were to tackle that, but uh, time might not really allow. Uh, management practices range from issues of 
uh, rearing, the rearing practices, parasite control, you need to control ectoparasites and endoparasites, like the worms and the ticks, using appropriate uh, chemicals or appropriate methods that, are, that, uh, that do not necessarily mean chemicals. Uh, we have vaccination of, that is diseases, you control diseases through vaccination. You can castrate these bulls, bulls. you can identify them, identification. You can uh, dehorn, actually dehorning is very good for the bulls because it makes them docile. So those are some of the points that I can give on that bit. Uh, we have a question on from what is the maintenance of a calf pen? A very good question indeed. And this is very much within the, the topic. How do we maintain our calf pens? How do we maintain our calf pens? You have not said your name, but thank you for that question. Uh, maintaining calf pens generally means uh, you repair the first thing is, of course, you repair the broken parts. Broken parts. You find that some animals, uh, animals sometimes get aggressive and they break uh, some parts of the calf pen. You need to repair them. You need to clean regularly. Clean regularly. You clean the calf pen regularly. You need to disinfect. Cleaning is very different from disinfecting. Disinfect, disinfect. Disinfect the calf pens. Yeah, those are some of the those are some of the maintenance practices that you can you can carry out on the calf pens. Yeah, a lot of your a lot of questions coming in. Thank you very much. We have uh, why is calf pen painted white? Why is a calf pen painted white? From a Kevin Laborette Boys High School. And I would like to say that I think uh, it is the other way around. We don't paint. Maybe there's something you have omitted. A very good question indeed. Actually, we don't paint, paint the calf pen white. We don't. We whitewash them. We don't paint them white. We whitewash and the reason why we whitewash, we whitewash, we just wash the cement that has been made, uh, that has made the walls and the floors. We don't paint them at all. Because the paint contain, the paint, the white paint or the, with any paint, uh, contain lead. And lead, you know, it is a, it is a poisonous uh, metal. So we don't paint them we, because of the, the issue of the lead that can cause poisoning to the calves. So thank you very much. Uh, keep tweeting, keep uh, sending your feedbacks through the various uh, media platforms at KUTV. And thank you very much for watching. Uh, we have another question here on, for which duration? Morning teacher, I am Christine from Kanyagi Girls. For which duration should a calf pen be housed? A calf pen can be housed for up to around even six months, depending on the farmer's preference and depending on the commercial activity that the farmer. It depends whether you are doing commercial commercial with this calf the, or the dairy business, or you are doing uh, subsistence. Some farmers can keep them even for up to six months, but others withdraw the calf pen from the pens even at around four months. Uh, morning teacher, I'm Collins from St. Teresa Itete High School about artificial feeding. Are there some outcomes that may be encountered? Are there some outcomes that may be encountered due to poor feeding? Artificial feeding and uh, I think, I think uh, you, you're asking Christine Oh no, it's it's Collins, eh? No, it's Christine. Yeah, Christine. 
I think you're asking about the disadvantages of artificial feeding, and of course, artificial feeding has some disadvantages. Uh, disadvantages of artificial feeding, we talked about, or rather in your previous lesson where you're tackling that bit, you talked about uh, one disadvantage being the calf might feed, uh, uh, might not receive the right uh, quantity of the milk. We also, you can also talk about the idea of the buckets. If they are not properly cleaned and disinfected, they can come up with, I mean, they can cause the scores, which is a, which is a bacterial infection that attacks the calves. So uh, I would like to end there, though I can see so many questions coming in. Um, uh, there are so many questions. Um, I'm very happy that you, ha you are really participating. But I would like to wind up this lesson with concluding that the, whatever we have learned today, uh, the most, the key thing that you need to master are the types of calf pens, which we said are two main types, the mobile and the, and the permanent ones. And we also need to really go through these things and ensure that they are at your fingertips by the time you're doing your exam. Because this particular question does not miss. It might not, it might miss on section B, but something must come up from this bit. That is, that is what we have analyzed and realized that this area is very, uh, is very much tested. So thank you very much for your feedback. I have been your teacher for today. I hope you have enjoyed the lesson. Uh, and I said I am teacher Karia Jennifer. I teach at Kahogoine. And I believe even my students are watching me. Uh, thank you very much. We are going to meet uh, next lesson. God bless. We are a software company based out of Nairobi, Kenya, and we build customer-centric solutions that helps businesses communicate effectively with their customers. So the first solution that we offer is uh, a VoIP solution. So the VoIP solution is basically a call center uh, that allows you to push up to um, between a thousand to a million concurrent calls at a go. So that's either if people are calling you in or whether you're calling people out. The advantage that we've been able to also see with this is people can work remotely. So if, for example, you're in Nairobi and you're managing a team in Mombasa or in Kisumu, then you have full access. For some exciting learning and fun teaching. How does a plane fly over the sea?